Hey everybody, Norm from Tested.com here. So we couldn't also leave CES without going back to the HTC Vive booth and finding Chet Falsic from Valve working on CVR. Chet, how's this week been for you, demoing the Vive? Good. Hectic, hectic, but good, really good. It's been really fun to get, uh, catch up with a lot of partners that I haven't been able to go visit, get to show people the new front-facing camera, show them the new uh, visual systems. It's just been really fun. Yeah, so I do want to talk to you a little bit about you know the how Steam VR and also your relationship with HTC has progressed. Obviously, the first developer kit it's in the hands of developers, people building content for that, and we know we're hoping this headset comes out in April. Why implement a new feature now, and how does that affect the developer community and what gamers can expect and users can expect come April? Well, it's a new feature that's there now, but not a new feature that we in a sense added. Everyone knew it was always coming. Um, back when we first sat down with HTC, we'd kind of taken all the learnings we had done back from the Valve room and said, this is the system we want to make. This is the system we want to create. We want to have virtual reality like we've seen in the movies, like we've seen in uh, the TV shows. So let's go for that. What do we need for that? And if you remember, the very first uh, Vive that you would have seen at uh, GDC actually had two cameras on it. Um, and we just kept playing around with that would be like, what would work best, kind of, we always knew we wanted to have this feature. Um, and it's just really come out now and we'll keep expanding on what it is. When you guys originally thought of that feature and put, like you said, the two cameras on that first kit, was it purely for a chaperone idea to augment that experience or did you foresee more implementation later on or potential for something? Um, I think, we, so we always knew we were going to be using it, what we call the convenience side of it, the chaperone side. We knew we always wanted to have that. Um, and we knew what we were doing with the chaperone system, with the grid and everything up, was a temporary step that this would be coming in at the end of that and I, I kind of, you know, helping that. I won't say the word augmented, and I want to avoid saying that word, because then as we open it up to developers, we'll see what they do with it. Um, we've gotten to play around with it, and I think all of us were kind of taken back and excited of how cool it was once we saw it and how... In our, so much like the first time we saw our virtual reality system down in the, the basement with the fiducials on the wall and this thing goes off in your head and you have a million ideas uh, instantly of what you want to do, kind of the same thing happened with this, where all of a sudden people just had all these ideas and things they wanted to try. We often compare VR in the way, you know, the, the Valve room and especially the chaperone system designed to the holodeck in Star Trek, but in the holodeck the walls fade away and the idea is that you can go on forever. The chaperone system is kind of the inverse idea of that. It, it keeps you, comf you know, comfortable in your, the space that you've designed, but what about adding the camera and your ability to see at least a representation of the real world enhances comfort and enhances presence, especially when it's about the world that you, you're not supposed to interact with? So believe it or not, uh, Star Trek cheated on some things, uh, and locomotion's one of them. Uh, I'm not quite sure how they're doing their locomotion. We'll, we'll do some hand wavy thing there that'll come in the future. Um, but for us, it was, you know, we, we would be in the room, and you, if you were by yourself, you'd have to put your hand out and look for the wall. You'd always be scared you're gonna bump into the wall. And that just taught us that that wasn't about safety as much as it was about it pulled you out of the experience. You stopped feeling like you were there when you were worried about things. Um, we, there's like only so many things you can juggle in your head. And that's kind of what also makes like when we do demos like this where there's other people around you, it makes it a little harder to really get lost in what you're doing. And so the, the idea with the camera was that this will then help you know what your room is. And this is why some of it's gone through so many iterations already is originally we were thinking, man, if you project the room into your headset, isn't that going to take you out of it? Isn't that going to just ruin it? But what we found is instead it's that safety issue of like, you feel even more secure, you feel more in the world because you don't think about it. Like in my office, I don't have um, five meters across. I have a regular home office, right? But so some of that area is above a desk. It is above a TV credenza. So now as I'm playing and I'm swinging something, I'm running after something, I see that come up and I know oh, I'm safe. This is a tracked area, this is a physical object, I don't have to worry about it. And having that information really helps because once you're in there for a while and you're playing, you forget your orientation, you forget which way you're going, and so having that come up and actually inform you of that doesn't take you out, but actually helps the presence. Is the goal to have the, you know, the optics and the sensor in the system kind of represent how, what your eyes would see in the real world and have that perfectly mapped? So when you're holding something like the controller and you see the controller with the camera, those things are one-to-one. -one. Are you doing any, you want to do any type of processing on that or is just straight up, let's put the camera image on there, you know, put that blue hue over it and, okay, and outline? It's processed now. Everything we're doing is processing because it's about really low latency. It's about making sure that that feels really comfortable when the, vir when the real world comes in. Um, and so the, the effect isn't just a cool effect to make it look like the 80s uh, version of virtual reality um, 
or is uh, we have we have an argument over if it's called the Tron-like effect or not. I don't think it's quite Tron-like, but uh, but you get the idea, right? Like it has that effect to it, um, and that is actually you know it just that helps I think keep it that balance of the real world and keeping you in there and informing you about that situation. So, you know. Uh you guys have um, positional tracking. That's obviously important. Tracking controllers and with the lighthouse system, tracking other objects is possible in the future. What's going to be the path to getting to there? So one of the things we really want to do is, uh, and we'll be, we'll be actually doing it shortly, is so Alan Yates, um, one of the guys who's really behind a lot of the technology you see in the tracking system, uh, is, is from the maker community. We really want to make sure that we open up our system and lighthouses available for other people to be able to kind of play around with, see what they do, see what they explore with. I mean, the cool thing that we see already, like at work, is we have two base stations for eight developers. It scales where the base you can have you know a limited number of base stations and many more objects inside of there. You're not limited. Um, right now, we actually in all of these systems have four controllers being tracked, just so we can swap them out during demo sessions. So, like, the expandability and what we can explore and do is going to be really interesting once we open this up. It's clear a robust system, and I think in VR, one of the important things isn't not only, you know, what virtual objects you're tracked, but also what real-world objects can be tracked. If you add a wall in, it's tracked, it enhances every, every additional thing you track. Are those things you're finding, like, even fake walls and, and, and adding constraints, virtual constraints, all these things affect a presence, right? And how do you combine those things? Yeah, so actually, I mean, one of the funniest things is, uh, Developers, when they first start working with our system, are like, hey, can I control the bounds? Can I move them in? Can I, I don't want players going here, so I'm going to stop them. And I was like, put up a virtual wall. Players end up, if you make your world right, they respect those boundaries. They're part of their brain. That lizard part of their brain doesn't want to go run into the virtual wall any more than it does a real wall. And that's like a great way of like limiting and kind of shaping how players move around in the space. But yeah. I've noticed that you on the blog post that you guys have made, you've also experimented with photogrammetry and ways to map the world and, and put 3D objects into the game, into your, the engines from the real world. Does the camera, is that one of the roadmaps of that? Is that one of the steps to, to doing that? Um, so that's a little bit different of a system outside. What, with the eventual implementation of everything we do in the camera, we'll be talking about later. We just wanted to show kind of this first step here. But just to speak outside of that then to the photogrammetry stuff, is super awesome. People should read that blog post and try it and go do that to something cool in their local neighborhood and share it with people. Because 360 video, you instantly know when you're in it that you're not there. Um, if I think it works with any kit. You can download our uh, the, uh, the, the Reykjavik um, field one. And so traditionally you can't do um, like you can't do light field over a big giant open space. You can't capture that kind of data over, right? It's just too much. But with this, it works really well. You're walking around and you can turn and look at the rock formation over here. And you go, okay, I, I, I think this would work, of course. And then you go look at the field and you can actually move around and you actually can go some distance before the field falls apart. I mean, eventually it does because you can capture all of Iceland. But it's like this really interesting thing and it ends up being this really cool. Yeah, so, and also, you know, you, the camera system, the enhanced chaperone system, all this stuff enhances comfort and keeps you in VR longer. You don't have to take off the goggles as much. You can adjust windows, you know, find where your mouse is or something if you're on, at a desktop. And is, how important is it going to be to keep people in the headset in, in some type of, and, and having Steam being maybe more than just a front end portal? Because like, you guys do a lot, like there's a balloon activity inside Steam. So you guys thinking about that? Yeah, I mean, so one of the failure cases is always when you have to do this. And so that's why if you were playing around in it, this, even this weekend, we already have a version of Steam up and running. And the idea is while we're running through and, and working, we actually launch things from Steam. We keep inside of there, you can close things, you can bring it back over, um, you can choose to have the chaperone come up and show you, like you said, your drink, your keyboard, get reoriented that way. Um, and we're also looking, as we open it up to developers, of if you are doing something that's seated, and you know people are going to want to look at their keyboards, and you know they're going to want to look down, like giving you that ways that you can actually integrate that into your system so that you don't have to put some kind of tracking puck or something on that keyboard, right? Right, and, and also just the experience itself. Right now there's like a, a, a divide between when you're in VR and when, when you're on a 2D desktop, and those two worlds don't really interface, even if you're creating something in Tilt Brush, and I don't see a lot of people exporting that and then going to Photoshop and doing stuff. Like, sure. How important is it going to be to meld those, the, the 2D world and also the VR world, you know, whether in some type of enhanced Steam VR thing, and make, or maybe make Steam more than just a launcher? 
Well, I mean, so we're, we're going to bring over the functionality and the things that you love about Steam now into the virtual reality world. We think that's really important. There's people who are used to being able to chat with their friends, do all those kind of things. So we're doing things like, you know, there's actually a virtual keyboard you can use and all of those kind of features. Um, I mean, for the actual experiences and how they cross over that, um, it, that's kind of up to how different people approach it. I don't know if you've seen what Fantastic Contraption has been doing. Look for Colin Northway's uh, Twitch stream. They're doing a bunch of crazy stuff of how people can view and interact with somebody else who's in virtual reality. And I think just one of my favorite things of us having these open demo bays as somebody's playing Tilt Brush over there is you can just walk, like it's a physical, right? You're moving around. It's just not something that, like, watching people play games traditionally now is not that exciting. Watching them play stuff here is, is fun. It's funny, right? It's great. And how important is social to Steam VR and getting people who are in Vibes we're connecting with each other and, and doing things together in a shared space or in some type of virtual space. Yeah, so um, I think again for the like the local uh, kind of social stuff, uh, I think the people f the furthest out there really are uh, fantastic contraption and just how much fun that is to watch somebody else. But there's other stuff. There's like the little Ninja Trainer game, which has a high score game and it's a I think a 60 or 90 second round, and it's just you know you you hot seat it and you go around and it's just really fun to watch somebody else because it's fun again. It's, it's like you're watching them do uh, a sport or another physical activity where their actual body's moving and actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. So that's always really fun. And all the online stuff is something, you know, we've worked at for a really long time with Steam. So all the Steam matchmaking, all the Steam work stuff developers have already had works through with this. You talk to a lot of developers, you travel a lot, and one of the problems that developers are trying to solve is locomotion, everyone wants to break that, and localized locomotion, we get, you know, room scale is convincing, it's awesome. Um, should, are you telling developers to you know, focus on that and making the best experience out of that localized locomotion, or are you encouraging them to you know, try to find some way to, you know, with the redirected walking and try to solve that big open world problem? Experiment. Try things. Every, every, ex every experience has something different that matches with it. I mean, uh, you go to something like the gallery, which does their blink system, which works really well for their system, and once you try it, you realize like, it's not something they added later. They actually, the experience and how you interact with things in the world are all built for that system. And then my f recently favorite way somebody did something was, have you gotten to see Everest? Mm -hmm. Right, so you're flying up that mountain. That would make you ill if you were just out in space. So they put it like you're on a screen, and then you do that beautiful moment where it unwraps and you're standing on top of the ice flow, um, right? And it's just all of a sudden, oh wait, oh my God, I'm there. And they've, they've moved you miles, and yet you didn't feel cheated. Because you're used to seeing scale and big things on a movie screen, so when you see it there, your brain goes, that's giant, that's big, right? Um, and when you see it without that framing, it doesn't feel as big, right? And so they got that benefit out of it, they got the movement out of it, and they put you up on top of that ice flow to go do their thing. I don't want to give it away if people haven't seen it. And it all feels really good. You never feel like that's not you, right? And so it's a lot of experimentation. This is all really new. So we always tell people, experiment and then share what you're doing. Talk with other developers. There's a lot of what we're used to. It's like when the advent of cinema, you know, when the train came at you, people thought it was real. Or when, you know, trains started moving faster than 35 miles per hour. It was actually getting bigger. You think psychologically or physiologically our brain's going to change over time to accept more things in VR and be open to more, more tricks? Well, but we, we do that in all things. Go watch um, a Twilight Zone. It is slow. The first 50, 30 seconds of that TV show, you know the entire TV show, and then it takes another half hour. But it was the, the viewers at that time didn't have a developed language. They didn't understand what they were saying. They were brought slowly to it. So for them, it didn't feel slow. Um, now we have so many jump cuts, and you know, it's so quick and all the action, and you know, it's down to sound bites instead of dialogue now. And that's because people are used to getting that information that way. And so we do that in all things. And I think we're just going to see this that happen here is we start to get more of a shared language and a shared shared language for consuming a shared language for developing and then that will start helping propel that even forward and we'll keep building on it and building on it so every year I think you're going to see experiences that have just built on everything before them very exciting to see VR mature and this is the ground floor right now it's getting closer and getting real yeah. can't wait till April 2016 this year is when we're expecting these to hit April. April this year all right thank you so much Chad. it's great to chat with you yeah I was good to see you man yeah